Hi everyone, Jeff Alex here, your host of the Living Well with MS podcast. To all our listeners, I hope you and your families are staying safe and healthy during this COVID-19 crisis. While social distancing and other restrictions may seem like a drag, in the long run they will prove critical to stemming the tide of this epidemic and returning to a sense of normality. I have faith we'll come out of this stronger, smarter and a bit more enlightened as a result. In the meantime, we at Overcoming MS and the whole team behind this podcast are here for you to keep you informed and help you keep on track with your personal journey to a healthier you. Now, on with the show. Marie L. McCarthy is an award-winning and international best-selling author whose books Journaling Power, How to Create the Happy, Healthy Life You Want to Live and Heal Yourself with Journaling Power have introduced people around the world to the power journaling has to help heal the body. After losing feeling and function in the right side of her body in 1998, Marie was diagnosed with MS. Undaunted, she took up a daily journaling practice, which over time helped improve her MS symptoms to the extent that she is now an accomplished recording artist with three full-length albums. Marie's website, Create Right Now, that's create, write with a W, now.com, is the platform she runs to share her methods, expertise and passion for journaling. So Marie, welcome to the podcast and I'd like to start off um, by asking you if you could share with our audience a bit about your own personal story um, and your journey since being diagnosed with MS. Oh, certainly. Um, And I just want to let you know, um, my name is Mary. Oh, apologies. Sorry. (laughs) That's okay. I I spell uh, I just spell my name a little bit differently. I just like to let you know. Um, okay, certainly I'd be, I'd be glad to talk about my, uh, how I got into journaling for the health of it. Um, I, I've been uh, uh, living with my health challenge known as MS for almost 30 years now. Uh, and about mm, 20 some years ago, I had an, uh, an exacerbation where I lost uh, most function and feeling on the right side of my body. And I needed to uh, uh, find a way uh, to, I I guess, let me back up a bit. Uh, Having had a lot of experience with MS, I just had this feeling it was gonna be around, this exacerbation of this episode was gonna be around for a while. So being uh, a high powered businesswoman, I needed to get a procedure as quickly as possible to teach myself how to write with my my left hand. And I was introduced to uh, a young lady by the name of Julia Cameron, who wrote the book, The Artist Way. And in that, uh, she has a thing, a procedure called morning pages. And each morning uh, you sit down and you write three pages of just whatever, stream of consciousness. So I thought, oh, that sounds like a good logical uh, way to, to get me uh-huh. up and running as a, as a left-handed writer. Uh, so I w- went through that process and it became uh, very soon on a very, shall we say, woo-woo, spiritual, uh, emotional experience. And I started uh, remembering things from my childhood and it was just a, a, t- a totally different experience. It was way more than just uh, physical therapy. It was uh, emotional, uh, spiritual, mental as, as well. But so you were just, literally uh, doing it because you had to learn to write with your left hand. You just had to practice the action of writing. And you thought, well, this is a good way of, of learning to write. Yes. Yeah. It's like, like I said, just something that I, I need a, a, a discipline, a, a procedure or whatever. And so I thought, hey, well, well let's give this a shot. This sounds like... like it, it, you know, being the practical businesswoman, I said, yeah, it, that makes sense. So, and that's how I, I got started. And I thought, yeah, this is, sounds like a good idea to me. And, and, and got went off into who knows where, started the inner journey into who really lives in Mary McCarthy's body. And so um, with your MS diagnosis, presumably you, there was not much treatment available 30 years ago. I uh, know. Um, that because I was uh, diagnosed in 1991, so um, my I, my uh, neurologist at the time uh, put me on uh, Imuran, which was uh, a, 
it's uh, usually used in uh, uh, transplants, you know, to help the body with rejection and things like that. And they were finding that it, there was application. So uh, yes, uh, to answer your, your question, so I, I was on on that uh, uh, for a while, but then after like uh, seven or eight years, uh, she's uh, my neurologist had started taking on. Uh, it has a potential, of taking on carcinogenic uh, or prompting cancer and things like that. So it's just like so she took me off that. And by that time, uh, the what they were calling the ABC drugs were just starting to uh, come out. Uh, and uh, she, you know, being the the established medical doctor, she had to get me on a drug. So <laughs> I was on uh, on the Avonex uh, for for a while. But uh, and, and that was part of the the the, the process. Of the, I was uh, I learned from journaling because I was, when I started on the Avonex, I was like two or three years into the process of journaling, and I was just discovering so many fantastic things about myself and and all that. And I was on the Avonex for a, about a, a year, and if I had since I had you know the issues on the right side of my body, I had to have a nurse come and give me the uh, the weekly injection. Well, one week she didn't come, and it's just like I didn't I didn't lose two days because what normally was happening with the the Avonex is like the day after or sometimes two days after I would come down with the flu and get sick and all that. But it, I when she didn't come and gave me gave me the shot, I felt really good the next day. So I called up my neurologist and I said. Thanks, doctor, for for everything, but no more drugs for this kid. <laughs> there is, I think that's come. That's quite a common theme in the podcast is that although the drugs have moved on a long way, um, particularly it's sort of in the last five years, it's, it's sort of more and more and more um, newer drugs coming out. There's still this side effect. Um, the, the, the stronger the drugs, the stronger the side effects and so there's always that trade-off and and it seems like we're quite a long way from something where you can just take a pill no effects like a, a vaccine or something that we might have that there's very minimal effects and we get all the benefits we seem to be in, in the ms area to get something which is effective you're going to have a lot of side effects as well uh, definitely and, and I, again i attribute my uh, decision to go off the drug to the the journaling because with the the journaling I, I had gotten into my my thoughts my my heart my my soul uh, as as I could say I was dealing with the issues in my tissues all the you know, emotional mental things that li literally I've been carrying around in my subconscious and in in my body but I think as I I think the the journaling helped me helped empower my myself and, and say, well, wait a minute, if if they haven't found out exactly what's causing it, what the cure is, I think, yeah, I, I think it's, it's great and wonderful that all these scientists have come up with all these uh, things to, to help the process, but it just like, it, it just didn't make any sense uh, to me. It's, it's just, uh, yeah, so like I said, it, and it's been 16 years now and I, I feel fantastic. Oh, brilliant. And and so what would you say are some of the key benefits of keeping a journal? Um, well, I, I think the, uh, the, the A number one benefit is, is that you are able to deal with all the thoughts, uh, emotions, uh, traumas, ex experiences, and understand the the source of uh, those things and really understand what power you have to say, yes, that's what happened. I was uh, such and such and whatever. I guess the, the key thing with the journaling is, is really understanding and owning your intelligence, your creativity, your uh, power, your strength. I think that is the key thing is, is, as I said earlier, to find out who you really are, because we've been basically functioning uh, on an external basis and uh, 
we've been told by everybody who we are, but we, we've never really spent the time and been with our ourselves and really delve deeply, deeply into our, uh, our personhood. Our, and I, so I think that the, the, uh, the A number one benefit of, of journaling uh, is to really underst understand and Im Im appreciate and embrace all the, the beauty, the talent, the creativity, everything that, that really makes who you really are, not what you know, you've been thinking that you are for all these years. And, and do you think that there's a link between, as well as the mental aspects you've talked about, is there a link between journaling and physical healing potentially? Oh, absolutely, positively, because I think journaling enables us to take a look at ourselves holistically, because again, based on how we are uh, brought up and uh, trained and conditioned and uh, deal, dealing with the you know, established medical profession, everything is so compartmentalized. But with journaling, it, it helps us understand and realize we are a process. We are physical, we are spiritual, we are mental, we are emotional. So uh, definitely, and like I said, I'm, and I'm at the point now that with, uh, I'm, I'm doing now ambidextrous uh, morning pages so that I'm doing one page with a, the left hand and one page with the right hand. And I have almost complete uh, function uh, on the, uh, the right side of my body. Oh, fantastic. So, so you've actually, so the original symptoms that you had have um, are much less so now. Oh, yes. There are, yeah, I, I'd say I'm 75% uh, 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 back to where I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm able to, to walk. Uh, I mean, certainly with a, uh, the assistance of a, of a walker, but it's just, uh, it, it's just a whole, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm whole. I, I just, I feel very, very whole and very uh, functional and it's just really fascinating to, to, to see the, the, the changes. And, you know, and with the, the functionality, I just think too, that just the overall functionality of, of how I look and how I, I carry myself and the breathing and all that, the, the journaling has really helped that. Like I said, I don't, I couldn't tell you scientifically what, what's going on, but I just know that from a, uh, a physical point of view, I'm much better than, uh, you know, I, I was uh, with, with the episode. And, and certainly vastly, I, I see continual improvement in my, my physicality by uh, doing my daily journaling. Brilliant. My, my uh, just as an aside, my son actually is, is, um, is ambidextrous. And when he learned to write, he was writing, he'd start a line with his left hand and then he'd swap hands halfway across the line and finish it with his right hand. Which, cool. um, yeah, I'm, I wish he'd carried on actually because they they discouraged it at his school. Um, because he was his writing wasn't very good, but he was kind of learning twice. And they said he's, he's effectively learning to write with his left and right hands, and so that's why his writing's not his writing, like, um, as in the words he was writing was good, but the writing, um, neatness was poor, so um, they they discouraged it and he ended up being um left-handed as a writer um which is somewhat annoying actually because it's harder to write left-handed and we wish they'd made him be <laughs> right hand but um yeah because he does other things right-handed it's random what he'll do one one way or the other but um yeah well, no it's just interesting what you're saying writing some something's left and something's right and that's exactly what he was doing when he was when he was a child well that was the fascinating thing to, uh, for me about uh getting into to journaling because that I became left-handed very, very quickly. And one of the things I realized that came up in my, my morning pages was that I always was left-handed, but the nuns changed me when I was in grammar school. Because oh, okay, because they did used to, didn't they? They used to, there, there was, I mean, especially, I mean, I'm, I'm from Catholic upbringing. And there was a... Oh, absolutely. So you know very well. So it's like, good little Catholic girls do not write left hand. Well, no, it's the whole, um, and the words for uh, sinister comes from the word for left, and yes. gauche comes from the word for left, and and it, left is taken as a bad thing, isn't it? It was sort of almost demonic to be 
to be left-handed so they were yeah very encouraging you to be right-handed bizarrely yes there was, um, it, it was fascinating like i said so to, to a long way around, uh, Jeff, to answer your uh, the question, there definitely has, you know, physical things. It's like, oh, my goodness. And now that I'm uh, ambidextrous, it's like it's opening up even more and more aspects of creativity, intelligence, and things like that. So it's just, you know, again, just being able to, to do things that they – uh, they said that we shouldn't be doing or they whatever it's just like it's, it's so exciting and so freeing to realize wow damn i'm good <laughs> <laughs> so you think that actually keeping a journal i mean this this podcast is specifically for people with their mess so keeping a journal could actually improve um the health of people with their mess oh definitely because it's it's my goal and intention is, is that I, uh, it is helping me do whatever I need to do uh, physically to uh, heal myself. And like I said, I fully intend that uh, one, one day in the not too distant future, I will not be needing the, the walker or any assistive devices or whatever. It's, uh, so definitely, it's a, de- definitely a beeline. It's, journaling has helped me take ownership of myself and, and appreciate uh, and understand that it's my body and who knows better about what's going on in my body than I do. So, and, and then with, with me, it's a whole different way of, of working. It's just like, no, it's, it's my body. This is what's happening. And this is where I need help from uh, a doctor, uh, uh, whatever health resource. So it's, it's really completely shifting things around rather than, you know, going out there, find trying to find. Oh, I need help for this. Need help with that. Journaling has helped me center and get clear on. Mm, okay, this is what's what's going on. What do I need? So, and it ha- it's helped me change completely. Change my my diet. I'm um, uh, strictly paleo, and that that works really well with my my body. So I just really feel the that daily practice. Of, of self-care, self-nurturing, self-healing called journaling has really helped me uh, holistically, spiritually, mentally, and physically for sure. And do you think, um, you mentioned sort of creative um, influence as well. Do you think that there's a connection between journaling and your music side as well? Oh, absolutely. Again, that was one of the uh, things I learned early on when doing the morning pages is that as, as a child, I've always loved music and I always wanted to be a singer. And it's, uh, and, and I remembered a, an instance in, in fourth grade when I tried out for the, the choral group at school and uh, they, they didn't want me because the, the, they said I had uh, no music sense and I was tone deaf. Well, it's a little child. You stuff that all in, you know, and, and I think that's, again, that's why I'm so passionate about journaling is that it, it, it really brings up the issues in your tissues and really appreciate uh, so many of the things that, that happen in childhood. It's just like journaling enables you to, to process those things. And it's like, wow. Cause it, there's so many things that were, were repressed and it's like, of course, when you have that kind of a, a, a situation when you're a child, you're going to forget about that. So it's just, you know, and then you're building the, you know, the, the self-esteem challenges and all that type of thing. So it's, again, uh, the journaling was just uh, fantastic and, and, and bringing out, oh, my, my goodness, I, I really do. And what was interesting was, was, was the, uh, uh, after I, I wrote that and came to the, the, the conclusion, that's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to set a goal. I am going to learn how to be a singer. Well, less than a month later in my local newspaper was a uh, story about a local music school that caters to children of all ages. So, and I signed on and, and started taking singing lessons then. So it's just, I like I said, I could, I could go on and on and on about all the, the things that, uh, the benefits of journaling. And it's like, and just all these things that are just, as you uh, we were saying, 
that we just repressed or, you know, uh, uh, you know, so the t- a teacher says something or, oh, oh, you can't write or gives you a, a B or you know, a D because you uh, didn't do the grammar, right, or you know, all kind of crazy stuff. But that's where I, I go back to what I call the issues in our tissues. We're carrying around that, that in our, you know, in our being, in our subconscious and, and all that. And this and journaling provides the opportunity for us to uh, to process all the the stuff and to recognize and bring to the forefront all these things that oh that's my love that's my passion and you know and, and now I'm at the point and it, it has helped me uh, with my return to 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 writing and now I've, I've written two books so it's and I'm not working on my my third so it's. I could go on and on and on as far as uh, creatively, physically, mentally, spiritually, how uh, journaling has l- saved my life. So I think you've probably convinced a lot of our listeners. You've certainly convinced me um, that journaling would be a very, very useful um, thing to start. And so what tips would you have for someone who is completely new to journaling and wants to start? What what would you say was the be- the best way of starting um, to keep a journal? The the best thing to to do is to get a pen and a notebook that you feel comfortable with. Take some time with your uh, with the, the journal and put down and put at the the top of the page a question of like how do I get started journaling? How do I you know, whatever, you know, whichever you feel like, you know, you want a question, you know, but the, the question that you asked ask me is very good. Put that at the top of the page and then just write. To, and, uh, and I mean, just, just free write and free write and free write and, and experience the process. That's the best, best way to do it because there, you know, there are no uh, guidelines or, or whatever that there's only one right way to journal and, and so that, it's not because I, I always thought of it really as a diary right that, that, what did I do today but it's not necessarily that you're, you're talking more about um experiences or goals or different topics it's not I did this today it could be anything it's it's, it's whatever it's what and the it it introduces uh you and us to and it introduced me to a new four letter word and it's called feel because journaling is your thinking with your heart not with your monkey mind or your uh brain or you know what, what's on top of your head your the key about journaling is you're getting into things that you, they never told us we should deal with emotions you know it's just because it, that's and that's what the real challenge is. Because we're dealing uh, with our, ourselves, we're we're learning how to live our life from the inside out, and it's and that's very scary and different. So, to the the best way to do it is rather than uh, to get started is to just get a pad of paper, get, get a pen, take some time to your yourself, and just ask a, a question. And just write, write, write. That way, you get to experience uh, the uh, the mental uh, and physical and, and spiritual, and uh, 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 you get to experience the whole the whole process. And it's just because it's it's very challenging, very scary. Because journaling is all about getting into your heart, your soul, your intuition. All those things that we were never taught how to do that. I mean, good grief, spending time with ourselves and working on our our inner life and what makes us up and, and how we feel and things like that. We were just never taught how to do that or never supported in doing that. But now we have the opportunity. This journaling is, is really, uh, shall I say, it creates space for the healing to take place. And there's just so much inside of us that, that now we, it provides the opportunity for us to, to deal with uh, 
the erroneous thoughts, the unhealthy feelings and all, all that. So it's and and do you journal at a particular? Do you sort of schedule in journal for a particular time of day for journaling, or do you just as and when the feeling takes you? Is uh, for, how, how would you do that? For me, it's it, it's uh, first thing in the in the morning, and then I, I do my my meditation. Uh, but then also it, it also uh, some but some days I I just you know as the spirit moves me it, it, I get to it. But what one of the things I am always uh, I've been into now for about a year is what I call night notes. At the uh, the end of the day, I take uh, one page and just write about uh, the uh, the the learnings the the gratitudes the positive things that that happened every every day and I find that has really helped my my sleeping because I have had over the years as a lot of people have uh, challenges with sleeping but now thanks thanks to that I'm routinely sleeping through the night uh, seven to eight hours so and it's it's great so uh, so again it gets back to the uh, what, I, what I said earlier about the journaling, there's only one right way to do journaling, and that's your way. So, yeah, and, and that enables you to get into, hmm, what do I feel like? I mean, like some, some days I'll just go through the process like, hmm, I just really feel like just sitting down and letting it rip for a while <laughs> with the journals. And so it's, it's, uh, it's because like journaling has given me permission to do what whatever I feel like. So I, that's really exciting. And do you think it's important to, you mentioned pen and paper, is it important to use a pen and paper or could people use an iPad or an app or uh, uh, modern if, technology? If you, if you want inner, if you want to have access to your spirit, your soul, your body, everything that makes you up, the only right way to do that, you know, the only way to do that is by pen to page. Uh, the although the technology is great and wonderful, but it's just like if you want stress reduction or uh, to feel better or do a data dump, that's great. But w when we're do we're talking journaling for the health of it, we're talking about pen to page every day, uh, and and that access you know enables you to access all of who you are. And um, would you just use? Any pen and paper, or do you like to have a? Do you have a favorite pen and a nice leather-bound pad, or does it really matter? Do you just pick up any yeah. old throwaway I, pen? I, again, it's, it's whatever you feel like, or whatever you want to do. I mean, just you know, thinking in terms of of when you're when you were a little a little kid. You know, what did you like to do? Or you know, some people uh, use crayons or what so there again there's not uh i use uh, personally what has worked for me is a, a spiral uh you know note a spiral big notebook and whatever i i found a and a, a pen that's you know really good uh like a, a little uh indentation that's really helpful for because i tend to really grab onto the pen and hold on to it so it's really uh helpful um, and but then also too Another thing about the the journaling, it's it's uh, a ch your choice whether you want to keep it or not. For me, once I've been completed a, a a notebook, it goes to the trash man. You know, it's like okay, I, I've gotten what I I needed to get. It's like you said earlier about you know writing it down. There's so, for me, there's something about just writing it down, going through that process of getting it out. It's like oh okay, fine, I got that, and then then I know that you know, sooner or later. You know the the answer will the approach will come up because I I've have ju just done I've been consistent in that process. But it's like, again, I have a a client who uh, who has been journaling for like um, thirty years, and he took his journals to uh, I guess a, a Kinkos or a a, a place where they cop they copied, and he he has uh, uh, computerized all his uh, things. So he, he has a legacy of uh, all the things that are in his journal for 30 years. So again, it, it, that's what's it's so exciting. And I can't stress enough. There's only one right way to journal and it's your way because, you know, it's just like, it's because it is about 
you and what you feel like doing and who you are. And, and that's what's so exciting. And would the same apply to the privacy of your journal? Do you do you keep them confidential or are they public for your family? Uh, or it, Again, it, it, it's, it's up to, to you. I mean, you know, it may be that you know, if, you, uh, if you decide to, to journal, it's like, mm, yeah. And, and, once you get, and once you get into the process, you'll find it's very intense and very deep in that. So I think that it's then your, your choice as to, Mm, you know, uh, especially when you have a, a family and you're living with uh, other people to, to explain, okay, this is, this is for me. And this is, you know, it's, uh, and I, and that's, I need to, you know, for you to re respect that or, or whatever, or have the uh, communication with people that what this is all about and it's about you and it's really none of their business or, or you know, whatever. So it's just, uh, again, it's, uh, uh, up, up to you as to what you want to do and you know some people uh share their journal with you know with people that uh live with, there, there are some uh some people i i know that that are uh married and in fact uh, one of the uh uh ladies wrote a, a blog a blog article is that journaling is the best marriage counselor uh because they both keep journals, but they share their, their, their journals. They have, you know, a, a meeting, a, a session that they sit down and they, you know, maybe uh, talk about what their, their experiences of journaling uh, were, what came up, uh, what issues in, in their relationship need to be discussed. So there are many things that you can do on with, uh, with your journal. Okay. I think that's, we've had some fantastic advice there. Um, is there any, Last tips you'd have for people? Uh, the only tip I say or is what my hashtag always is, and it's just right on. So if it, the the key is is to just do it. It's like I said earlier, as you asked me about how to get started. That's always my standard tip and answer. It's like, oh, I don't know what to do about this or you, know, and I say just write on just get out your journal and just write because it's about the process and it's about your uh an on-call 20 24 7 therapist uh healing agent what whatever so the best thing to do is just zip the lip and just get to the page and get it out Oh, Mary, thank you very much for that advice. And thanks for joining us. Um, in the show notes, you'll see that there's links to all of Mary's websites. There's um, Create Right Now, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all the social media. Um, so if you want to get more information, then please head over there. If you've enjoyed the podcast, um, please give us a rating or review on the podcast provider of your choice. And I hope you join us next time. With that, I would like to thank you all for listening to this episode of Living Well with MS. Remember that there is a wealth of information at overcomingms.org, including show notes and an archive of all Living Well with MS episodes. Once again, that's overcomingms.org. There you can also find OMS-friendly recipes and exercise tips. Connect with other OMSers in your local area through our OMS Circles program and learn about the latest research going on in the MS world generally and related to OMS specifically. I encourage you to register on the site and stay informed about the latest news and updates. I also encourage you to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And please feel free to share it with others who might find it of value. Let us know what you think about the podcast by leaving a review. And if you have ideas for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. So please contact us via our website, overcomingms.org. Thanks again for listening and for joining me on this journey to overcoming MS and living well with multiple sclerosis. I'm Jeff Alex, and I'll see you next time.